Hey guys, welcome back to The Bench. I'm Jay and on The Bench today, we're going to talk about the in-size calipers and micrometers versus the Mihetoto calipers and micrometers, okay? So in this video, we're going to talk about the price point. We're going to cover the uh, environments in which you use the digital versus standard calipers and micrometers. We're also going to talk about which environment you use the higher end as far as in-size versus the Mihetoto calipers and micrometers. There are certain environments and certain jobs that you only can use one versus the other and we're going to touch on that in this video um, we're also going to talk about the durability we're going to talk about some of the features and we're going to cover how to use them okay and at the end we're going to use a comparison of the measurements of these instruments by using the one inch standard that we have and testing both the micrometers and calipers and seeing how close they come okay so stay tuned and let's get into it so starting off guys in size brand of micrometers and calipers are great okay i have been using them now for 13 years just to give you guys a little bit of a, a background on me i'm a precision machinist i've been machining now for about 13 years when i first got into industry the in size brand was the brand that i went with um actually i was got lucky and i was able to buy them a little cheaper at the time i think i purchased them for like 130 for both of them they came in a set now if you don't have a lot of money and you're starting off in this field, by all means, if you're working in a mom and pop shop or you're doing a, yeah, like a mom and pop machinist type shop industry or just you know, regular machining, insides is great. OK, they will get you through. They're super accurate. I've never had any problems with them over the years. As long as you don't drop them or, you know, uh, bump them into something, just like any piece of measuring equipment, any piece of measuring equipment is going to last you. OK, uh, do a little bit of comparison of the micron, the metototos versus the inside. So starting off with the calipers. So if you notice right here uh, on the metototos, they have a nice big thumb rest to slide back the slide with. And if you notice on the inside brand, you have this little one. So it's not as pronounced to give you a little one down there at the bottom. Uh, obviously, the slide on the Mahat Toto is going to be a lot smoother, okay? Now, something else to notice on the Mahat Toto versus the InSize brand is on this particular model, you have your graduations of 100 down here at the bottom on your InSize brand. And I'm going to try to hold that up so you guys can see a little clearer. But if you notice that on the Mahat Toto, they give you also the millimeter function, okay? So you have the millimeters on the top and you have your inches at the bottom. That's a little extra feature they give you on the Mahatotos, okay? Uh, as far as weight goes, the inside does feel a little bit heavier to let you guys know that. And I also want to talk about, as far as the heaviness goes, I want to talk about the steel. So like I said, I've been using these now for approximately 13 years. Uh, if you notice a little bit of pitting right here on the back. And when I say... By all means, this is not a, a you know, slight on insides or the insides brand. I am a person who everything I touch with metal seems to rust. Same thing with these metototos. If you notice, they have a little bit of rusting, a little bit of pitting. It's going to be a little hard to see, but not as much. They have a little higher quality of steel that they use. And that's what you would expect when you talk about a more expensive brand like that. Uh, another thing you notice is on the face of the dial, you notice that you have a checkered pattern so that you can rotate the dial on the insides. And the difference on the metatotos are that there is a smooth surface, okay? So on that smooth surface, it makes it a little slippery if you're in the shop and you have a little bit of oil or something like that on your fingers, it gets a little slippery, okay? And that's one thing I do like about the insides is that nice checkered pattern, okay? Now, as far as the micrometers goes, you can pick these up on Amazon. I will leave you guys a link in the description. Um, I've seen them now on Amazon for about 60 bucks. These are the one to twos. These can bring you about, one, uh, about 60 bucks. I see the zero to ones on there for about 50, uh, sometimes about 60. Uh, so I will find the best price for you guys and leave that link in the bottom. Uh, as far as these measuring equipment and where you can use one versus the other. So... Over the course of my career as a machinist, I've worked in many different environments. I've worked in your mom and pop shops where, you know, it's, it's concrete floors, chunks missing out of it. And, uh, you know, greasing all, all, over, all over your hand, you know, leave work at the end of the day. You're basically covered in oil and, and, and uh, dirt, pretty much it feels like. 
Uh, and now I work in like aviation and aerospace, which is a different environment. It's super clean environment. Um, and, and with that being said, like I said, these environments are vastly different. OK. And the reason why I'm telling you this is because in the aerospace world, OK, an aviation world, you're going to have jobs. They're going to have certain contracts. And in these contracts, they're going to provide you. Well, they may provide you a measure. They should provide you. Let me put it back up. A good company will provide you with the correct measuring tools that you need to do the job. And that's going to be in the contracts, by the way. OK, so a lot of these companies you're dealing with and you're dealing with. Uh, I don't say any name brands, but. You know, a lot of these companies out there, they're going to have in their contract what equipment you can use to measure certain things. OK. Also, uh, when you're doing with aviation, aerospace work, you're going to be with companies that are going to have QC departments. And in the QC department, you're only going to find stuff like uh, Sterrett or uh, Matotos in there, uh, or maybe some Browning Sharp in there. You might find that. But most of the time you're going to find the Matoto uh, brand micrometers, calipers and measuring tools in the QC department. OK. So with that being said, if you're going for a QC work or a QC job, uh, by all means, inside is not going to be the brand. So if you're in the market and you're looking, you've got yourself a nice little QC job lined up, uh, inside is not going to be something you need to purchase because they're, you're not going to be able to use them. I, I can almost guarantee you that any aviation high-end work like that, you will not be able to use that type of equipment. Um, and like I said before, uh, any high-end company, aviation, they will provide or they should provide you with the, you know, whatever the contract says they want you to use to measure whatever pieces of equipment. All right, guys. So next we're going to do is a measuring comparison with the one inch standard. All right. So we have the totals and you can see right there to go straight to zero as soon as I close them up, which is perfect. That's exactly what you want to see. So as you can see, guys, I am measuring exactly one inch and one tenth. Okay, let's see if you guys can get that in the shot. I'm measuring one inch and one tenth. Now for the insides. All right, guys, so for the insides down here, even though these are the standards, you can see this is measuring. I'll try to get this in the shot. You can see that it's measuring exactly one inch. Let me go over here and look on the side on the tenths and see if we can see. Actually, I would say that might even be. Yeah, I would say one inch, maybe one tenth. You can see it's a little bit past. You can see it's a little bit past the zero. And you got right there your first tenth mark. So I would say it's spot on. OK, so guys, let you know right there that shows you how accurate these inside micrometers are. And like I said, I've had these for 13 years. And when I say they've gotten heavy usage, I mean, they have gotten heavy usage every day in the shop for the past, I would say, at least. Probably 10 years. OK, uh, like I said, now I do a lot of aviation work and everything, so I don't really use these a lot anymore, but I still use them in the shop occasionally. And these are definitely worth the money. If you definitely cannot get some uh, Meha Totos, uh, higher caliper, uh, higher end measuring equipment, by all means, uh, don't sleep on this equipment, okay? It's definitely worth the money. That's, that's my take on the inside brand uh, micrometers and calipers. By all means, if you found this video helpful, uh, thumbs up, subscribe to the channel, would be great. I would love to have you. Until then, be safe.